Hello everyone. I am in my game room. I am cleaning out the game room. There's a lot of stuff everywhere. But I also wanted to sort of... Uh, I've been asked a few times about how to create a good tables. So this is, uh, this is my game table. This I've uh, done it up like years ago when I was still playing 40k basically. It's uh, sanded, um, which makes it kind of rough. So it, it is a bit rough on miniatures um, and hands and dice for that matter. But it's really nice and um, I like it a lot. But what I was a actually asked about is how do you start when you're doing a table? Um, maybe especially for tournament play. I usually start with some line of sight blocking things because what you don't want is a completely open table. Uh, I have played on a few completely open tables and they are very, very good if you're bringing artillery. Um, most people are not. And by the way, that turns into a very boring game if you're just like sitting in one corner shooting at the other corner, right? Both of them bringing artillery. So I would start by placing a few houses. I need... I think you need to make sure that there's like equal weight on each side of the table um, of, of places to hide. So I'm placing five houses and this can be done in the old Warhammer way where you place like one in the center and one in each quarter. This is kind of boring and unrealistic, so don't do that. Um, you can also do this where you feel like, okay, uh, which I often do, one side should be forested, one side should be a, t a township or like a little village or whatever. So you can do like this, where you have all the houses placed on one side of the table. Like that. Now, for me, this side is okay. This this is an okay start. Um, I would sometimes suggest that you do it diagonally so that you don't get straight lines and you can sort of hide behind some of the lines. So maybe we should do like this instead. Like that. Perfect. Let's start with that. You can already see that I'm sort of, I'm figuring out, okay, maybe there's a road going down here, right? So what I want to do now is I am going to pick up my box of roads. I actually have a physical box full of roads that I made. These are uh, like roofing, uh, what's that called in English? I'm not sure. Um, it's soft, it's sort of flexible. In the heat, it sort of bends. But uh, one side, I've uh, sanded them, painted them up, given them some grass, and that is my roads. So, we're going to place a road. One thing that many people uh, say when they're doing roads for a bold action is, please don't make that road straight through the table and unobstructed. I'm not that worried about unobstructed roads, um, but maybe that's because I play a lot of transports, right? So what I'm doing is I'm trying to aim down that line and then find a lot of my straight roads just going down that line. Let's see, one of these. Ah! Wait a second, we've got we've got something going off going off to the side, haven't we? Well, maybe I can do like this. Yeah, that'll look good. Right, because I got a like a crossing here, and that house has got a crossing as well. So if maybe we can move it up there and then have some road coming out of there. Yeah, that could work. Um I need a few more straight roads going straight to the other edge of the board, more or less. Should we do a bend? 
I think we should. It's a good thing to have at least one or two bends in the road where the road can sort of branch off and you can make sure that you have other parts of town. Also that you can't just run a transport straight off the table. Um, that's one of the things that most people are a bit worried about when you're doing roads is you can take like one of your trucks and then in envelopment you just run it straight off the table. Right, that looks nice, doesn't it? Road straight through a like a European village of some sort. And let's make sure that this sort of makes sense as well. Yeah. And then a road going down next to this house. That also looks good. So you can tell that I'm I'm not just you know trying to make, to balance things out. I'm also trying to make it look sort of realistic, sort of nice, uh, depending on on where I want my houses to go and stuff, right? Um, so it's it's not all uh, like just about the gameplay. It's also about um, making it look. Not necessarily realistic, because this is not a realistic area that we're building, right? It's, it needs to be playable, but it also needs to look at least believable. So, and to make sure that we have equal opportunities on each side, we have two entrances to the road over there, and one here. I'm going to make one more here. Just to make sure, because that's one of the things that will balance out. If you have... Um, the same amount of entrances to the road on each side. That means that it's balanced. Hmm. Can I get... Hmm, maybe not. I think I'm going to have to do like that. Yeah, that works. This is what I've done. I've created these turning pieces in several sizes and several angles. So some of them like, like almost 90 degrees, right? Um, I did that so that I could always like find one piece that would fit however the configuration, how many, uh, like however I sort of hit my table. I could always sort of fit them to the edge, right? Oh, and by the way, note, the edge is mounted with a piece of board so that dice don't roll off it. That is a pro tip. I like it when you're creating a, a board. It's not something that you can take with you, right? Because this table, it weighs like 20 kilos or something. It's it's massive. Um, but it does work. Okay, so that's the village done. I still need to think about how to block line of sight so that it doesn't become like an all uh, artillery fest. So there's still a bit too much open here. I think I need something to block down here. And then we're going to have to think about the other part down here, which I feel like could maybe be a forest next to the village. That is how I often like to deploy my terrain anyway, with a forest on one side, a village on the other side. Um, it seems realistic, it seems nice. So down here, I have a whole box of <coughs> area terrain. Um, and I have several pieces here that I made. These are just chipboard and then sanded, painted and flocked. We're going to need some of those. I have some of them that are a bit more extensive. If I can pull it out. Yeah, there we go. I have small hills with like, um, this is, uh, this is bark from, I think it's a fir tree. Um, and then it is embedded in some plaster and some, like, I build up a small hill for it. Um, so let's take a hill. So maybe one final piece of area terrain. Oh, let's not forget, I need something for the other side. I'll take one more forest. Again, I'm looking to make something that sort of blocks line of sight. A forest there would sort of block line of sight, right? It will cut off that angle, so you can't run a truck all the way through it. At least you have to turn once. And 
an artillery piece in that corner wouldn't just have a free range like f all over the table. So on the other side here we're going to have to distribute these four pieces of terrain. Don't distribute distribute them equally. You don't need to do that. This is not Warhammer. We don't need to be completely equal. You can distribute them so that they make sort of sense. But you should think about uh, creating some... like blocking some of the lines. I think I would place them like that. What is important is that this side of the table doesn't have too many lines straight to this side of the table. Okay? That is what is important for balance sake. We'll come back to this this huge box of like terrain because there's a lot of like mats that I use for and and um, like it's all door mats basically from IKEA um, and I use it for different like textures and shapes and fields. Not very important right now. Right now, I think those fields work. So what we're going to need to do now is to make some more blocking. Now I've sort of blocked out what I want to block out, line of sight blocking. And we can, we can finish that off by just box of trees. Um, and then placing a few trees in each of these forests. I am going with some sort of European area, I think, because there's a lot of fir trees in my collection. Um, so northern, northern European, which also matches the houses, right? Those seem kind of uh, French, Belgian to me. Those houses, at least that's that's how I think of of uh, northern French houses. Um, Maybe they could even be sort of uh, British-ish, maybe. Uh, they're not very Tudor style, right? So maybe maybe I won't use them for my uh, medieval British armies. But they, they could be good for Napoleonics and so. Um, they're a bit small in my collection. They're a bit small, um, like size, scale-wise. Let me just pick up some miniatures. Um, I mostly use uh, Perry miniatures and for Perry's they are perfectly fine. But Perry's are a bit a bit small-ish, right, compared to Warlord Games. I think I have a few Warlord Games minis here. Let me take... I have a Warlord Games German there. And, and he is a bit big. Not not very big, but he is a bit more chunky than the uh, the, the Perry mini. Um, so the houses are maybe a bit small, but that really I find that doesn't really matter too much as long as they are believable in scale. Right now, I have populated my forests. Perfect. I'll get back to this box l later. Right now. Um, I think I need to find some linear obstacles. I have a box for that as well. I have different stuff down here. I have good old fashioned walls. I have some fences. These fences are made with uh, pine needles. Um, like huge needles that I found in a forest near I have a vacation house and I uh, I picked up those and just weaved them together between some sticks and they made perfect little fences. Uh, I have some classic uh, hedges. I made a few more hedges because these are scouring pad hedges. I think they maybe need a little bit more flocking. But they are okay. So, I think we need some hedges and, and stuff around these, this village just to mark it out as a, a real place, right? And also to make sure that vehicles are not too easy to maneuver and that we have some cover for our troops. So, where should we put it? I feel like there's a huge line down here and maybe across there. So maybe block off some of those lines somehow. 
maybe set like one there and maybe like a few hedges over there. That sort of blocks off that corner, right? Because wheeled vehicles can't get into that corner right now. They're going to need to go down there. But that is sort of okay. Both of those corners have very limited access right now. Then I think I'm going to take a few of my wall sections, create little patches of gardens. I like behind village uh, houses to, to sort of mark out where their territory is. This is this is like that house that is their garden or whatever. Um, that is realistic, but that also creates uh, lines of hard or soft cover where where our troops can sort of hide out. And that is useful, right? Um, in this case, I think this whole section down here, I'm going to like make sure that this house seems like it is that is that house a section right seems realistic seems good maybe i should put a little something here just ah, no it's fine something along that road perhaps over there um and then i think that the linear obstacles is actually kind of good i think perhaps Whoever has this corner has a lot of hard cover, right? So let's just give them something to worry about with deploying their vehicles as well. So that they don't have a too easy, easy time just running vehicles along that road or whatever. And then hiding behind stuff. There we go. That sort of creates a funnel. So if they have if they want to go in there, they they can't really they're going to have to think about where to recce if they have recce and right because they can go into these areas right but not behind the houses down here cool one thing that's lacking this area that area these two areas need something more that area down there has one linear obstacle this one hasn't really got something so i think i'm going to have to find something and just to make it not so that both sides are completely equal i'm going to give it one of these i usually play these uh like uh, what are these called i'm not even sure and i i teach english god damn it um these um uh, fences it's a fence oh my god i'm having a brain fart um these fences I usually play them as soft cover, um, like that. We don't need the sides to be equal so that if he gets hard cover, he gets hard cover, right? We just need them to be sort of balanced where you have some cover in each of the areas of the board. But I don't think you should put much more terrain on the board than what I have now. This half of the board, for me, that is done. I can put some fields on it just to make it look prettier, but I wouldn't put more area terrain on it. I know people, some people, uh, do, um, and that's perfectly fine. We need to have varied boards, but for tournament play, that is balanced, okay? That is perfectly balanced. We have a lot of line of sight blocking. We have area terrain. We have linear obstacles. We have roads. We have sort of possibilities of maneuvering. It is perfectly balanced. Yes, there are some lines of sight, but not a lot. Perfectly balanced. This is also pretty balanced, but these areas are pretty bare, both of them. So I think we're going to need to do something about that. What should we do? Something that, that fits in with that forest, shouldn't it be that? Hmm. I'm not really sure. Well, you'll notice that I, I don't have many ruins. Um, I, I, um, I like my landscape to look intact. Um, then 
you can you can sort of shoot it up with your tanks afterwards, right? I'm going to put some hedges down in these areas, um, just because it's what I have, and and it will create some interest. Um, again, maybe not going linear, linear, and maybe not going completely overboard and and plastering it all into hedges, but creating some shapes that could resemble like barriers of fields or something, right? Like that, I think. Yeah, that works. And the same for the other side. I'll just, no, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted this one, an opening. So just a few shapes. That means that transport trucks will have to go through different openings. I like that. Otherwise, trucks are overpowered and, and not fun. And then we'll do the same over here. We'll create a, a hedge with some openings in it. That can sort of go like that. Again, I've placed it so that it sort of blocks that line, so that at least you'll have some cover. This one, this line, is the one line I'm leaving open, except for the, uh, the fence down there. Right. Final thing. Final thing to complete this board is to make it look pretty. So I am going to go back to my box of terrain here. And I'm going to pick out some pieces. I like to use different colored um, earth, earthy-ish pieces. I've even made some on uh, cardstock here that could sort of be like a meadow for a, a horse or something. Should we use it? No, it's, I, don't, I think it's too big. I'll pick out some of these and a few fields. Right, like that. Just a, a pile. It doesn't really matter. Um, these doormat um, fields, I usually play them as soft cover for infantry and not as rough ground. I am from the countryside. Uh, I have I had a few years uh, living on a farm. And my experience is you can run through a field, it will hurt your legs, but if you are, uh, if you're wearing like some protective clothing, uh, like heavy trousers or some, something, then it won't matter much. So um, I don't think that you should play fields as, as um, rough ground, but of course, that's completely up to you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the one to tell you what to do, right? Um, it's just that I don't, I don't play them as rough ground. I like to like put a few... It looks like it's been plowed at different times, so it, it has different shades of, of different colors here. Um, I like that. Works. Right. Almost done with my table. I think I'm going to have to do a battle report or something. Use this table for something. Otherwise it's just a wasted time, isn't it? Talking to you guys about how to do tables. You know how to do tables. Why am I even, even spending time on this? I'm, I'm not sure actually. Hmm. <laughs> Where should I put this last one? Maybe over there? Nah. I could put it here. Ah, that looks okay. Right. These ones are just spare. Down they go in the box. And I am done, I think. Like that. Right. That is it. That is my table. 
and I find that this is perfectly balanced. Some people might think that there's a bit too much terrain on it, but compared to some of the tables I've seen, and Emil, I am looking at you, and Caspar, you too, uh, this is very light. Um, it's still open, you can use vehicles pretty easily. You have places to hide behind from the line of sight blocking of the forest, the line of sight blocking of the houses. The houses are there uh, to block line of sight, but they are also there uh, for multi launchers so that people have something to shoot at. Um, they're there if, if you don't have multi launchers, you can use them, then you can sort of occupy the houses. And, and use them as fortresses. So it, it gives a varied um, game. One thing that you might want to add, uh, let me see, where did I put that? Mm. Oh, where did I put this? I forget. Oh, it's here. All these roads, right, in envelopment, they are a perfect way to get back and forth across the table. So you might want to take like an obstacle, put it in the middle of the road, down, and then the road is closed down. And you also get some cover from whatever. I don't always do this, although maybe I should, um, just to block any easy like driving through the terrain. Um, I find most players will be able to place one unit on, on each of the roads and block the roads down. Right, that was it. Cheers, bye.